Man, where my bike at? Somebody, somebody stole my bike, man. Oh, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get to work. Man, I gotta call my boss. Dang, and I gotta hear his mouth. Let me call him, man. Wow. Ugh. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, sir, I just want you to know I might be late for work, man. What you mean, why? Somebody took my bike. What you mean? Wait, hold on. What what, what they got to do where I live at? Somebody's still on a bike. I can't help where I live, man. I'm a, I might be 10 or 15 minutes late for work. I got to go out here and catch the DOT if it comes on time. What you mean if I'm late for work, I'm fired? Man, you only give me 20 hours a week anyway. You pay me $10 an hour. What you mean you doing me? You're not doing me a favor, man. You're not doing me a favor. Tom thinks you're doing me a favor. I'm trying to do an honest living, man. I'm calling you. I'm frustrated. Hey, look, man, okay, if you're going to fire me, fire me, man. Bye. Damn. I can't believe this. Oh, man. When did Rob bring my bike back? Oh. I got to stay here. This is my house. This is my house. Been here for years. Ah, oh, she made it. Finally made it. My girl. Oh, I'm tired of her, man. Damn, I can't believe she made it. Oh, oh man. What's up, brother, brother? Oh, what's up, lady what's T? Up? I see you, man. You look good. Look at Thank your you. sign. Thank well, I'm trying to get there, man. Life is a struggle. I'm just trying to get it. What's your words of encouragement for me? You know I'm still standing out in the bar in the house. Mama left me, so I'm just trying to hang in there. What's the word? Man, just stay focused. Keep going, man. No matter how hard it gets, just keep going, man. Yeah. It's hard. Sometimes I be wanting to just give up, man. Oh, you can't give up. Because right at the end of your, your giving up, God is going to step in and pull you through it. That's true. That's true. It's sometimes, yeah, you're right. God done brought me through a lot. You're right. Well, listen, Lady T, it's good to see you. You too. Bam. <laughs> hey, Ma. Hey, Ma. Grass, you represent. Well, good to see you. you too. Proud of you. Thank you. Um, thank I'll see you again, and um, thanks for the words of encouragement. Oh, man, you're welcome. I'll see you later. You're welcome. been here for years. Oh, Ma. God rest your soul. But we ain't going to give up. We ain't gonna give up. You always told me to be strong. Well, how am I not gonna give up? I'm... Okay. I'll be strong, mama. I'll be strong. I gotta get out here and try to figure it out. I can't believe somebody stole my bike, man. This is crazy. I don't know what. Man. Man, yeah, man. Yeah, my boss, I'm down here looking for him, man. You know he owed me $50. Yeah, I got to give him a new bike. I think this in my hand. He's trying to hide out downtown. What that's going to do for him, man? We can reach out anyway. Oh, yeah, this is him. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, hey, man, let me call you back. Let me deal with him, man. Let me call you back. Yeah, he's on the phone. Right. I'll call you back. Bye. Hey, 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 hey. You remember me? You remember me? The guy you used to work for, yeah, the one lost his bike, uh, told my bike got stolen, he told my shit been living on the east side of Detroit, you know what I'm saying, yeah, but you owe me $50, this time I'm asking you what's up. Yeah, that's right, I remember you, man. Right. I'm going to be honest with you, man, I don't, I don't believe that your bike got stolen. And on top of that, I don't really like fellas, man. You don't like fellas? That's all you got working for you. I don't really like them either. Oh, wow. I feel like one day, if you get your shit together, you'll get rid of these. Oh, wow. Good luck, bro. Oh. Hey, fam. I'm going to see you one day soon. Believe that. Hey, cousin, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm awesome. What's up? Oh. Uh, well, just dealing with the issue with the guy at the job. 
another guy wanted to fire me because I'm an ex-convict. Um, and he cheated me out of fifty dollars. Rumor is, and he's an ex-convict himself. I can't find anything out. Everywhere I looked, it's not there. So you know, I got to lean on you to help me find out the information. You know. Okay, totally. Yeah, for sure. I I can do that. Um, when do you need it by? Uh, I need it as soon as possible. And, and let me say this up front because you always ask me. You know, I haven't told anybody you're a judge and you're my cousin. You provide me information. So continue to help us out. But I need this as soon as possible because it's giving us a lot of flack. Giving a lot of guys a lot of flack at the gym that he owns. He's dating with Mira's daughter. So I'm assuming that it was something there that he's hiding information. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I got you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks. Bye. And yeah, look at my car, baby. Hey. Hey, boo. What's up, boo? Ooh, Lonnie, is that your new car? Man, come on. Now, you know, Lonnie, Lonnie been hustling forever. I've been hustling ever since every line Lincoln was my grandfather, father, father. Man, look at my car, baby. Look Ooh, me. when you about to take me for a ride? You want to go for a ride? You say you want to go for a ride? Line, line, line. Watch this. Let me jump. Yeah, yeah, line, line, line. I do. Yes, I do. What? Oh, oh man. Somebody done stole my car. Call the police. Call the police. Uh, yes, ma'am. I haven't stuck nobody up. I haven't robbed nobody. I'm working for drywall and paying by roofers. What's the problem? Right. My name is Miss James, and I came to help you out with some food. I heard you live in a poverty-stricken area of Detroit, and I'm coming to help you out with food, see if you need help with your rent or anything. So you hey, you sure you got James Booth for the right guy? Uh-huh. You heard I live in Detroit, and I'm on Navarre in a poverty-stricken neighborhood. You want to help me out? Correct. I don't need your help. You know, let me tell you why. Because what you do, your type of program, keep me in poverty. You don't provide me necessarily means to come up out of poverty. You keep me in poverty. When I'm on food stamps, I can't make over $2,000. If I make over $2,000, you cut me on food stamps. If, if my, when my mom, when I was growing up and my mom was raising us, if my dad stayed in the home, you told him if he stayed in the home, she couldn't get a food stamp and you would cut off her Medicaid. So that forced us to stay at a certain economical level where we can't provide. We can only work 20 20 hours a week. Anything over 20 hours a week, you take our food stamps and our Medicaid. So that kind of provides us a safety net to stay on food stamps because we don't want to lose what we got. Instead of you find, instead of your credit program that phases off, you keep us on. Then you won't provide us any money to help us come up out of poverty. No. I got to have good credit. Well, most of the people in my neighborhood, ma'am, don't have good credit. It's just so happy that I'm working out here for a decent guy who gave me an opportunity. So, no, I don't want your money. I don't want your help. And I'm not going to help you get elected so you can come and say you're helping the poor. You're not poor. Have you ever been without something to eat? Have, have um, you, would you like this food, sir? Would you like my help? Have you ever been out with, without something to eat? Have your power, a power ever been out? Have you ever lost your car? Have you ever, do you know what it's like to suffer? Do you know anything like that? No, because you grew up with money. You have no idea what I go through. I appreciate your, your care and concern, but you need to redirect that in other things. No, I don't want the food, and you have a good day. <laughs> Bruh. <Nah. laughs> What's up, fam? What's up? Bro, you what? still on that, man? No, you on that? Well, I'm on my money. Bro, let him go with his people dollars, bro. Gotcha. <laughs> Bam, who is this right here? You never thought I'd find out about your criminal conviction that you had for soliciting prostitution when you was 21, that you got your dad to cover up by paying some judge and a, pot- and a politician and your lawyer to hide it so you can drive these nice cars, go in the gym, work, and judge other people. But guess what I'm about to do, though? I know you dating the mayor's daughter. I'm going to put your business out there, fam. Let's see how you look then when bro. they find out. Bro. Let me talk to you, man. Uh-huh. Hold on. What's the work? Come on. Come on. Go ahead. I'm listening. I can't have this getting out. This is serious, bro. I'm dating the mayor's daughter. Absolutely. I own my business. Absolutely. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on one of these. Okay. I'm going to give you a job back. Good. Oh, yeah. That $50, I'm right. going to give you that back, too. Got you. <laughs> well, listen. What? 
This can't get out. That's fair, fam. I'm gonna treat you different. All the other convicts different. But we gotta keep this to ourselves. Can you stop saying convict and just say people, man? To all the guys who went through circumstances, you ain't gotta call them convicts. They right. people too, bro. Everybody deserves a second chance. You getting one now? Cause I'm gonna keep it like that. That's what real guys do. Right. All right, fair. Right, right. <laughs> okay, fam. That's cool, man. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, my homie? Look what's at what's you. Up? I appreciate it, man. We're off gonna go to the club, do what I do. Ooh, shoes, homie. Come on, man. Come on, man. Ooh, you got the girls. I know I you got the girls. Come on. You know what? What? When I was three years old, they used to call me Pimp Oh, you pimp? Man, come on, man. I need skills from you, Lonnie. Y'all listen, man. What? It's gonna cost you. It's well, gonna how much will call me? Big Mac. Oh, Big Mac? I got you. I knew you. <laughs> man, listen, man. Oh, what? you just asked me the other day. Remember you called me? Yeah. You had your friends. You asked me how far I kicked that football? Yeah. I kicked it football. Two two miles. When two I was miles? Years old. Look, it said, ooh, just like that. Dang. My daddy was like, ooh, Lonnie, you got a four. I said, ooh, Gaga, you right, daddy? What? Two miles, man. Guess what else I got to tell what? you? What? What? Tell Guess where I got what? this what? hat what? from, man? Where? Frederick Douglass. You got that Frederick Douglass? Frederick Douglass, slave owner. He passed man, that? Man, what happened, man? What? One day, what? he was me. running from the slave house. Okay. All of a sudden, Frederick Douglass said, Lonnie, Lonnie, here's a hat. Always remember me. I said, I'm real Frederick. Go, Bro. brother, go. I sure did. Bro, you did? Man, guess where I just what? came what? from? Tell me, tell me. I just came from New York, Mexico. New York, Mexico? Yeah, Mexico, you know, across the water, you know the border. I ain't never been across the water yet. But I'm saying across the border. You uh -huh. know, you got to fly over the water to get to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went over there, uh -huh. went to New York, Mexico. They see my chain on. They say, you, que paso amigo? I say, I'm no espanol, see? And they made me the king for one day. You I get the know. girl? I know you got the girl. Come on, man, I'm no espanol, see? Look at my new car, baby. Oh. That's nice. That's real nice, Lonnie. What? Yeah. Look, man. What? I just bought it. You just bought it? Just bought it from some other grass shit over at the McDonald's, man. Guess how much I paid how for it, How much you paid for that, Lonnie? $30. From Crackhead Joe. Crackhead Joe? Crackhead Joe, $30. Lonnie, you know you're right. You're going to get all the girls in that man, one, man. I can't man. wait, man. But listen, man. That's what this fit. I'll put, look, at the, look at it. Look, look oop, up. Oop, bam, oop, bam. 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 Listen, man, I gotta make a phone call right quick. Okay. Hold on. Okay. And uh, we go for a ride in my car. Okay. Let me pull it right quick. Oh, the door lock. Oh, it's okay. 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 I mean, go, go ahead and make a phone call, Yeah, Ronnie. we do that. Go ahead. Hey, hey, hey. Go ahead. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna call you. Um, yeah, I'll call you in a minute. I gotta get my car, get my ride. I'm supposed to be getting my man a ride. Um, yeah. Girl, I'm gonna come over there. My brand new car. You know I'm gonna be over there. We got a brand new Chrysler 300, baby. Yeah, girl. I'm gonna be styling. We're gonna listen to us a little, uh, Elvis. No, not Elvis. We're gonna listen to it. Hold on, somebody stole my car. What? They stole my car again. Hi, my name is Alex Kerna, and I am a student at the University of Michigan and one of the facilitators for Gus Harrison's Theater and Incarceration Packet. Hi, my name is Mark X. I was once incarcerated in the MDOC, and I participate in the program as well. So um, here are some of our favorite quotes from the Gus Harrison participants of the packet. Anthony G., who participated in packet one and packet two, said, in these days, it's just as easy for anyone to scrutinize your every word, your every move, like your summer homeboy selling drugs on a corner. Number two, Anthony D. said, I've never been involved in theater, maybe because my life was, was my, my life was like a real crime. Sorry, bear with me. Oh, my God. Drama. Go ahead. Next. Cedric C. said, I desire something new, different, and out of the ordinary for myself while in prison. Daniel H. said, I just stared out this, I stared out this big window just thinking it's freedom on the other side. Yes, brother. Dathan P. said, if I could give any gift to the world, it would be universal peace. With the current state of affairs in the world, I believe a place of universal peace wherein we can all live in peace is truly needed. Derek J. said, I think that theater happens in prison because it brings people together to create 
something amongst themselves. Deshaun M. said, we all come from different walks of life, so don't judge and treat people like you want to be treated. Uh, James G. said, the season is changing, which, mean, which means time is passing and freedom is getting close. James W. said, staying positive and focused is always challenging when you are incarcerated wrongfully away from your family, work, and normal life. Jason B. said, I may be more busy, but the tool of this freedom will allow me to change lives forever. Lives forever. <clears throat> John C. said, I am so excited that I am doing something to elevate my mind and spirit and exercising my creative thoughts and gaining some self-worth. Okay, Larry, Larry Faye A. The theatric venting is a great tool to, for prisoners to relieve stress, to let out some, some, some emotion that they could not or maybe or should not otherwise display in regular prison population. Amen. Leroy W. said, I couldn't help but note that there were no black people in the entire establishment. Every time someone passed, they gave me a strange look like I was here to rob the place. Michael H. said, I think that theater is happening all around the world in prison because it's a way to create a different world than one of the one we are in. Nathaniel S. said, I don't like the way you are defending those criminal, criminals, and it sounds like you're sticking up for them. People were being held unjustly, sentenced, and even at times sentenced to death by a system that is not providing remedies for these crimes against humanity. Some of the most creative, oh, I'm sorry, Quentin J. Some of the most creative minds in the world are confined to prison all over the world. Randall D. said, I think theater in prison is important because it offers people a way to express themselves. I believe we are mentally healthier when we can connect with one true self and express that. Gus H. said, a true friend is one who, not, one who no matter what has happened, I'm sorry, let me start over. <laughs> no, I'm going to yep. keep re reading. I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> because H said, a true friend is one who no matter what has, what, what has your best friend interest in heart, at heart. I'm not going to sit in the past. I'm going to enjoy the time we do have. Being, being in here teaches one to let go and move on. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting us um, get to know you not in person, but through these packets over the course of the past few months. It's truly been such an honor and a privilege to get a sneak peek into all of your minds. And I think a lot of the things you all said were super intelligent and really taught me something about um, theater and incarceration, as well as um, showed a true level of strength in the vulnerability that you expressed. And I think a lot of the times people don't think that being vulnerable can be being strong, but I think that vulnerability is like the truest form of strength. So I really appreciate all of um, your thoughts and the emotions that you poured out onto the pages. But you guys, you know, I'm very proud of you in there. You stay strong and believe in your dreams and your ambitions. Let nothing deter you from being successful. The only thing that stop you from being successful is you. You take advantage of this PCAP class and realize that it's a stepping stone to success. All right? You have the ability to be creative, to be what you want to be, and don't let nobody stop you. On the other side of that fence, that you, the other side of the fence is joy and success. I know things get harder than that sometimes, man, and you don't see the end of the tunnel. But the tunnel was at the end. Stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in nonsense and stand there longer than what you need to be in there. Think before you act. Use science project. Science project means think. You know, scientists figure out things before they do them. Somebody out here loves you and needs you. And they need for you to realize that you are somebody. Despite your circumstances, despite what you're going through, remember, you are somebody.
We love you guys. We are, we really appreciate you participating in the PCAP program. My hope is more people will participate in it because guess what? They don't have to do any of what they're doing. They're taking the time of their life to do this, and they're not getting paid for it. They're volunteers. I'm out here involved with them in the PCAP community. We need you guys to understand that you are somebody, and you need to stay focused, and we need your talent out here so you can be out here shooting movies and plays like I do. Okay? Understand this. What? I am somebody. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Do not allow that environment to deter you again from your goals and objective, despite what you do. If you feel like you want to pressure, man, put them headphones on, man. Stay focused on what you got to do. Think about the outside of the fence. Look at a picture of something. Do a reflection. Think about what you achieved in this class. And if you haven't been a part of the PCAP program, become a part of it. Because your life is, you have, you are in control of your own destiny. Nobody else. You are your own heaven and hell by the decisions you decide to make while you are in there. Thank you guys for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Peace.